Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the motion capture plugin for iClone 6. Uh, so what I'm going to be covering is uh, we're going to capture some uh, raw motion data using the uh, Connect Motion Capture device and then we're going to be refining it using a variety of iClone motion tools. Now to find your device mocap plugin, uh, what you want to do is go into your Windows menu and under Reillusion, you should be able to find the mocap device plugin and just select that and it'll load up in iClone. And the first thing you want to do is just select Connect. And once you're connected, if you're by yourself, you'll probably want to make sure that you use the option for body command at the bottom there. And that will appear on the screen later on, and I'll, I'll show you when that happens. Um, so after you've done that, you can just go ahead and double click on your uh, plugin window, and that'll make sure it's above, always on the top layer of all of your windows. So then go into your device console here on the right and connect. Now there's more details on all of these options in our iClone 5 uh, mocap uh, plugin playlist, so you can check that out on our YouTube channel as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on the mocap device plugin again and that'll bring up uh, this menu right here. And then I'm going to go and step back and what I'm going to do is calibrate my skeleton in the H pose. And you can see I'm getting ready right here. And once you're all calibrated, all you need to do is reach your hand over to the preview side. This is the uh, body command, on-screen body command, and you can preview it. And you can see my character is floating on the screen. But then you can use the height slider on the right hand side there to adjust your character's height. And you can see that now I can move around, do a jig, and I have the floor contact on my character. So once you're done previewing, just put your arms in the position of the, of the cancel icons on the screen and you'll uh, go back into your original pose. And then from this point on, all I need to do is put my hand over the record uh, option on the side there, again with the body command, and my character will go into the pose. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do my motion, a couple of takes of my motion, which is receiving a basketball and then taking the shot. And you can see I'm just going to do this repeatedly uh, for different takes. Now it's always a good idea to do this because um, it's very rare that you'll get the, uh, the solution that you want on the very first take. Uh, we're going to show you how to do motion key editing later on, but the better the take you get, the less editing you have to do later on. So it's always good to do you know a few takes of each motion. So here I'm doing about uh, 8 or 10 or something like that. And then once you've done that, you can go into iClone. You can close everything down and go back into iClone. All right, so once you have all of your uh, raw capture data, you can see I've changed the scenario slightly here. Once you have all that raw capture data, what I recommend doing first is saving it. If I press F3 and go into my timeline here with my character selected, you can see that I have this entire uh, motion track dedicated to this device puppet clip because, because we pretty much recorded for the entire project all uh, 1,800 frames. So what we're going to do is we're going to save all this data here uh, in case we need it in the future if we want to make, you know, use a different take or make different edits or something like that. It's always best to do that. So let's just go ahead and close down the timeline and let's go to our motion tab up here. And you can just go to your custom tab and in motion, in the motion folder, just go ahead and press the plus key and then we'll save this as a motion. So we can call this, uh, you know, raw b-ball motion. You can see the dummy on the icon there is kind of tilted to the side, which is the, the uh, stance we're at right now. So after we're done uh, saving that raw motion, let's get around to editing it. So I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline one more time here. I'm just going to go ahead and press the space key uh, to play back. And you can see we go, we're going through uh, all of our different takes here. We've got a little bit of uh, wrist uh, action going on there. I want to take the easiest one because we're not going to spend too much time on uh, editing, hopefully, in this tutorial. I think uh, that one is uh, pretty good right there. So I think we started from about here, uh, frame 660. You want to get a fairly neutral pose to start off with. I think the 659 should be okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on my clip right there and break it. And I'm going to take the first part of the clip and just delete that and move the second part over to the very beginning. Now, if you want to get into more detail on, uh, you know, editing all of your uh, raw motion capture data, we actually have a tutorial series on that that was in iQuant 5, but all the techniques are pretty much the same. So if you still have questions after this tutorial, I'd recommend checking that out. So let's go ahead and play this back from the beginning. So we receive the ball, take the shot, and land. And then from about here, I think, when we're back in our neutral pose, we can just right-click again, uh, maybe a little bit earlier than that. I think that's fine right there. Right-click and select break. And then I'll delete the third part of the clip right there. So now all we're left with is this one single motion that we're going to refine using our motion layer editor tool. And I have my motion layer track already open down here. If you can't find that, just go to your character's track and you can see the motion layer track right here. 
Now under the motion layer track, there's all the different body parts like the torso, arms and legs and fingers and everything like that. We're just going to worry about the main level, the top level uh, keyframes right here. So I'm going to hold the Alt key and uh, zoom in through our timeline here so we can get a little bit of a better perspective. Let's go back to uh, frame one here. And what I'm going to do now is go over to our motion tab and we're going to go to edit motion layer tool. And here you can see we have our character. If your bones are not this small, you can just go up to the settings and select the bone size as one. I prefer to do this normally when we're doing motion key editing, uh, just because you can see more of the body. So let's go back to frame one. Now let's take, take a look at our character's initial pose. From the side, it looks like it's uh, pretty decent right there. I think he's uh, in a pretty decent pose. If we want, we can take his hip bone, just select his hip bone right there, and we can uh, you know move that down so you can crouch like that. Um, if we take off the locks on his feet, you can see the TR stands for transform and rotation. Those are currently locked on his feet. If we take those off and we rotate his hip bone right here, you can see that our entire character will rotate just like we're in like the movie Gravity or something like that. Um, so we don't want that for this tutorial, let's just, just press Control Z and undo that. Uh, if we have those locks on, uh, we just press the lock buttons again to put them on, you can see he'll now do some kind of uh, funky looking uh, hip thrust right there. Uh, we probably don't want that either for this tutorial, so just press Control Z. I just wanted to kind of show you the differences uh, that the footlock uh, make when you're in the Edit Motion Layer tool. So keep that in mind. So I think, again, we can just, you know, take him down a little bit. Uh, something like that where he's kind of prepared for the pass. And then let's go from there. So our first keyframe edit we're going to make, let's go ahead and um, scrub through a little bit. So maybe about here when he lands his foot. We're going to make our edit right here. So all I need to do now, I can just go ahead and press the reset button in our edit motion layer tool, or I can double click in the motion layer track. Uh, both of those are going to edit a key for, add a keyframe. So from here, let's take a look at this motion. I think our character kind of needs to be looking to the side when he's receiving this ball. I also kind of think uh, I want him to be a little bit uh, closer to the ground. So let's take his hip first there and let's uh, move him down a little bit. Uh, so it looks like he's more, um, you know, tends to receive the ball there. And I think his chest needs to be rotated as well. So let's take his chest, use the E hotkey for rotation and move it over. So he's more uh, in looking towards the ball that he's accepting. We can take his uh, right forearm here and, uh, you know, move that over a little bit like that and take his wrist. I think something like that would be okay. Looks okay from this angle. And then we can take maybe his left forearm or left upper arm right there and uh, move that forward as well. I think a position like that would be okay. And again, his wrist also needs to be uh, open to receive the pass. So that looks uh, pretty decent. Uh, maybe his head can be rotated a little bit further down so it seems like he's looking more at the ball. So then we have something like this if we scrub from point one to point B where he's looking at the ball. Maybe even over here he can be uh, you know looking at uh, another player at frame one and receiving the ball right there. And then our next keyframe meta we're going to make is let's go somewhere over here and you can see our character because we made that keyframe edit his, his arms are going to be in a little bit of a weird position. So what we can do is when he's about to jump right here, when it's, both his feet are planted, so about right here, before he starts moving his uh, arms up, I think about here, what I can do is I'm going to just go ahead and press reset. And that's going to reset it back to the original position um, that we had in our clip. So when you, when you press the reset key, it adds a keyframe and it also resets all of your motion key data to that from the, that was originally in the clip. So it pretty much erases everything, but it adds a keyframe. So it's a very useful uh, you know, button to keep in mind. So here we receive the ball and then, you know, going back here, I think we can even make this a little bit earlier uh, right there. And we want our character to, uh, you know, look like he's still holding a ball, not kind of uh, a weird position like this. So let's go ahead right now and uh, take the wrist and maybe move that wrist a little bit over here. Uh, I think it can be, he's kind of holding a ball, right? So let's take uh, his left upper arm, I think and move that over a little bit and his forearm can be rotated down as well something like this and his wrist should be positioned so he's holding a ball so something like this and then he'll go in this position right here and i think that's pretty good so we'll just make uh, make sure it looks like he's you know at least holding some sort of ball from here grabs the ball and then here he's about to go up and then our next shot is about when he's about to launch, we want to add another keyframe right here. 
So I want to add a keyframe about here, right when he's about to launch. Again, you can see that edit that we made to the wrist is looking a little bit weird. <laughs> the ball would be falling on his face if he was positioned this way. So we need to make a couple more edits here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our character's upper arm and just rotate it slightly to the middle right there. I think I'm not a professional basketball player, so I don't know the exact pose, but it should look something like this. And we'll have to rotate his wrist out like this. And he should be, you know, supporting the ball like this. Um, so we'll take that forearm, maybe move it a little bit further back. And I think something like that would be okay. Maybe the wrist needs to be a little bit closer to the middle. So that looks pretty decent. We can even maybe take the um, upper arm there and raise it up a little bit. And his supporting arm can be raised a little bit as well. So take the left arm and something like that. You can even move the wrist back. There you go, that should be okay. So I think from here, he'll be taking up the ball up like that, and then he's about to shoot it. And then the next edit that we wanna make is when he's at the peak of his jump. So you go up there, you can see up, 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 down, up, down. So this frame right here is at the peak of his jump. So he looks a little bit strange right here, but we're gonna uh, edit that as well. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take his ankles and we want to rotate those outwards because right now it looks like he's kind of just like, you know, floating, or jumping flat footed or something. So let's take his ankles and rotate them downwards like that. And so that makes it look like he's actually kind of jumping right there. That looks a lot better. And now we need to fix his uh, arm. So actually this is the shot where he's supposed to be actually shooting the ball because this is at the peak of his jump right here. So I think if we press reset on this uh, keyframe right here, we should have something a little bit similar. Okay, so reset looks a little bit better. Let's take those ankles back down again. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, just like that. So he's still... He's still jumping. But let's go ahead and now we can take his uh, forearm and uh, the wrist should be kind of like it's looking forward after shooting the ball. Uh, again, from the front, it looks like he's shooting it off to somewhere else. But let's take this, uh, you keep everything a little bit uh, centered. I think um, that looks pretty okay as far as, uh, as far as the basketball shot goes, something like that. And I think his supporting arm is, is fine. What we can do is we can also maybe, uh, you know, rotate his entire body a little bit backwards as well um, by taking off those leg locks, selecting his hip, and then we can, you know, move his uh, entire torso back like that. So it looks like maybe he's, you know, leaning back as he's shooting a little bit. So we'll have something like this and then shooting. And then when he lands, obviously we don't want him to land like this. Nobody really lands like that. So as soon as his heels are planted right there, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and press reset again. And I think that's fine. So his just lands like that and get back, gets back up like that. Cool. So I think that uh, is pretty much it for our edits. Let's go ahead. We made, uh, you know, five keyframe edits. And again, when you're doing these uh, motion layer editing with the keyframes, try and keep it simple. Don't make too many. Um, unless you have all the time in the world to go into a lot of detail, um, I recommend keeping it simple especially when you're uh, refining your motion captures. So let's go ahead and play this back from the side. So it receives the ball, takes the shot, looks pretty good from the side. Let's go from the front and try the same thing. So I'm gonna go back to frame one again, receives the ball, takes the shot, and we look pretty good right there as well. So after he makes that shot, what we wanna do is have him have a little bit of a celebration. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna exit out of the edit motion layer tool and we're gonna to go to our motion puppet tool right here, which is our real-time loopable template motion tool. So you can see here, if we go to mood, I'm gonna use this angry template right here. I'm just gonna press space to preview this. And you can see our character turns around because our character's root is actually rotated around. In, in this particular scene, I rotated our character 180 degrees. And so when I apply default motions, he's gonna you know, flip around to the scene root. Uh, so you can see our character, he's gonna be just going, yeah, like he made the shot. You know, whatever you whatever you think, if he, if he missed, he's going darn it. Or if he made it, he's going, yeah, you know, it, it works for both, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. But what I'm going to do is because if I press space, you can see our character's feet kind of rotate outwards, which we don't want. Uh, what I want to do is I want to keep his initial uh, position for his lower body. I'm going to show you how to do that using masking. So if we go to our mask tab right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of our legs right here. And if I press space, both of our legs. Our character's legs will remain the same, but he'll still turn around just like that. If I press both, uh, if I select both of his legs and his hip right here, 
Take a look at what happens now. I'm going to press space and our character remains stationary in his position right here, which is pretty cool. But our character doesn't go down. You can see he kind of just remains stationary like that, which we're going to fix in just a sec. So I'm going to go actually go to the end of the uh, first clip. So after he comes down, sees the shot, and it's made. And then we're going to start recording. So I'm just going to go ahead and record one loop of this right here. So we'll just press uh, space. Yeah, just like that. And back to his original position like that. So let's go ahead and close our motion puppet tool down now. We don't need this any longer. I'm going to hold the Alt key and zoom out a little bit. Uh, scroll my mouse key to zoom out. And you can see now we have this puppet clip. And it's blended into our uh, shot. So we just go like this. And our character gets up. And you know does his... Yeah, so maybe we want to actually make that happen a little bit sooner. So let's go to somewhere like maybe around here. When he's about to do it. Let's right click our uh, puppet clip. Break it. And take the first section there again and delete that first section and move our second clip over and blend it in to our first clip. Now, again, this is the transition area right here. Keep that in mind. You can see we have our shot. And yeah, I just made it just like that. You know, we can extend this transition area as well if we want, um, just a little bit longer. You know, if we get into our position a little bit earlier, but I think that's okay. Okay, so let's do a couple of final motion uh, edits there to uh, get our uh, character looking like he's actually, you know, going, yes, right there. So I think uh, maybe when we start about here, let's go from here and just go and double click in the motion layer track and add a keyframe there. And then we'll have our character, yeah, when he, when he comes down and pounds like that, uh, we'll just go ahead and take our character's hips and uh, again, do the same thing, bring it down like that. So we'll have something like, yeah, and then, yeah, and then he'll come back up to his regular position, maybe about there. So again, we'll reset that. So it looks something like this. Yeah, like that. So let's go ahead and save this motion now. We'll apply it to another character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom out of my timeline a little bit, holding the Alt key and scrolling my mouse button. And what I need to do is click and drag, left click and drag in my collect clip track. So I'm going to just go and do that and go from the very end all the way to the very beginning and that blue highlighted area i'm going to just right click and then select add motion to library so let's go ahead and call this uh you know b-ball whoops b-ball refined and we'll just go ahead and save it to the desktop that's fine and then we can apply that to any character we want so if we go back to frame one and let's give this guy a teammate um let's who see who will be a suitable teammate for this guy i think we can use heidi heidi's uh dressed for the occasion not really but uh It'll be fun to see Heidi do this shot as well. So again, Heidi will uh, turn around uh, to the scene route as well. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that uh, we go select Heidi's foot contact on as well. If we don't have foot contact on, she'll just kind of go through the terrain like that. I'm going to press Control Z and undo that. We don't want that. If we have foot contact on, she'll do something like this, which is uh, what we want in this case. So let's go ahead um, back to our desktop here. I'm going to select our B-Ball Refined, and I'm going to... Go back into iClone real quick, and we'll just uh, make sure we're at frame one here and apply it to Heidi. There you go. There, so there's Heidi's uh, pro basketball shot. Yes, I made it. All right. So that's pretty much it for this uh, mocap refinement tutorial. Like I mentioned, we have another tutorial playlist for uh, motion, motion capture refinement in iClone 5 that is uh, very useful as well. It goes into a lot more detail on different techniques that you can use. Um, but that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, we may have, you know, a tutorial where we can show you how to shoot a basketball if you want. Uh, you know, leave it, leave a comment in, this, in the comment sections below if you uh, want something like that. We can use a physics basketball and uh, have these guys shooting at actual hoops. But again, that's about it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.